Thanks for joining everyone. Today we're going to be talking about collaboration at scale. So trying to understand some of the, the basic workflows and how to carry our civil 3D models into a model federation environment or, or platform or service uh, to be able to share our designs out to other project stakeholders. Something that's easily digestible uh, for others to take the data and the model geometry and analyze the model geometry um, as needed. So it's more about extracting and providing the, the right information to the right project stakeholder in the right way for it to be easy for and intuitive for them to be able to manage and analyze. So as I mentioned, there's going to be th uh, three different uh, avenues we're going to take that are going to be highlighted in this demonstration. The data set we're using is essentially that final design from uh, our book, our recently released book, Autodesk Civil 3D 2024 from start to finish. It's a new training guide that was just published a couple weeks ago. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do so. It's available on Amazon in Kindle, PDF, and hard copy format. So jumping into it, uh, right, what we're looking at right now is InfraWorks. Uh, it's an Autodesk product, and it's it allows for seamless integration with Civil 3D models. Also allows for uh, the ability to import Revit models. So if you have structures for your site, if you have houses on this particular site, you could import those that have been modeled out, or maybe SketchUp or whatever. Uh, but it allows for a lot of additional formatted files to be integrated into this model federation environment. Now, InfraWorks, if you aren't aware, it's more of a conceptual design tool, but I use it a lot for that visualization purposes and making sure things line up, our design models line up in real world coordinates in their true projections and that um, everything's well coordinated. And you get a great visual and you could share these out through web-based applications uh, to clients and, and for public outreach purposes. Jumping back into Civil 3D, we'll talk about the second workflow. This time we're going to highlight Navisworks. So typically uh, the typical process to carry our Civil 3D models into Navisworks is by using the NWC out command. And it'll essentially take all the model geometry, extract it into a, or export it into a format that's uh, digestible within the Navisworks environment. So it'll take all, all the information, pressure networks, gravity networks, surfaces, alignments, corridors, all that stuff, the whole nine. And as you can see, there's a whole slew of uh, additional types of file types that could be imported as well into this one environment. So you can, again, be able to see visually how everything's gonna be lined up, making sure everything does in fact line up in their true coordinate systems uh, or projections. Now, the difference between Navisworks and InfoWorks, InfoWorks allows for uh, you to expand on that existing built environment so you can see how it's going to be integrated into the overall existing land. Navisworks, it's essentially what you have modeled that, that you're bringing in. But again, you're able to uh, bring all this information, all, all the metadata is associated with the model geometry as well. So it, it picks up that information during the export process and is uh, available here as well within the Navisworks environment. So just to show you a, a little about how we can see that metadata, we're gonna select uh, our surface. If we go over the properties, we can see that we have some information, a couple different levels of information available that are associated with that model geometry that come directly from the Civil 3D exports. So again, we use that NWC out command, and it's a great uh, tool to use um, for model federation purposes, especially if you're going to be performing clash detections and, and running reports uh, for those clashes with Revit models and civil models and, and maybe I don't know, uh, SketchUp models or whatever it may be. But as you can see, as we select different types of information, different model geometry, the, the properties are being filtered and we're able to see all the metadata associated with those particular objects. Now, moving on to the third option that I'd like to highlight is a program that I've been tinkering with lately is called Speckle. It's open source, uh, so it does have the ability to uh, further customize and make some some custom solutions but i like to for now since i've just been tinkering with it just to see what some of the basic functionality uh, available with this product is um i've really just been using the box solutions and they have add-ins plugins 
uh, what they call connectors actually available for a lot of the different design tools and collaboration tools. So they do have a connector for Civil 3D, which we're going to show. They have one for Revit, for Navisworks, for Open Roads Designer on the Bentley side, for SketchUp, for a whole bunch of different types of modeling uh, tools. So all we're doing here is we're selecting the objects. And right now we just want to focus on the model geometry. Because what we're going to do with this model geometry is we're going to extract it from the Civil 3D uh, file. Let's set that reference point to the current user coordinate system that's been defined in this file. So it recognizes that later on. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a web app. It's essentially taking this information and building a web-based application that could be shared out with a client. So maybe the client that you're working with or a project manager or another project stakeholder in general just isn't familiar with the design authoring tools themselves. They're not comfortable with navigating the model in there. They don't really fully understand how to isolate certain objects and grab the information that they need. They could come in here and they could actually see this and navigate and, and play around with it within this web-based application. Now I'm gonna take this a step further and move this over to Power BI. <coughs> Power BI, uh, Speckle does provide some, uh, some plugins for that as well, for this integration. So we can actually build, take that viewer, that web-based viewer and build it into the Power BI uh, dashboard that we're going to be sharing out. So all we need to do is just grab that uh, that link that's available, plug that in here, we'll hit OK, and it makes that connection to directly to that model in web format. What we're going to do here is we're going to transform some of the data because we want to make sure we are, we're expanding and we're able to uh, grab all the metadata associated with it. So we're going to call this first query, just call it speckle. So we know that that's the base information that's being provided. And then we're gonna, just as an, an example, we're gonna build out some of the pipe details, the, the pipe data associated with our model geometry. So to make these relationships, to make sure that when you isolate certain information within Power BI and it's uh, reciprocated or received in the viewer, we need to be able to have some commonalities in there. So we're going to keep the object ID. We're going to remove some of the other columns. But that object ID is going to be able to recognize through the relationships within Power BI how each item is being connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand the data to include a few more items that are specific to specific information that we want to uh, grab from or analyze from the uh, pipe networks. We're just going to filter this out. So we have all the pressure pipes and the pipes being isolated here and all the information here. So the data slope, we do want to change that to a percentage value. And that's a, a quick change right there. Everything else appears to be okay. So we're gonna close and apply. So now we've created two queries essentially and are applying that within our Power BI dashboard. Now we can expand these and we can see everything going on and we can see that that, man that relationship was already created. It knows that there's a connection there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import that visual and this is available on the Speckle website. So now essentially all we do is click that viewer and we could add that to our dashboard. There's some guide information there if you um, go to that website, to that link. But essentially all we're doing is making these connections. We're dragging and dropping the stream URL, the object ID, so we know how we're making that relationship connect when we start building out some of the other uh, tables. So let's add a quick table. going to add the speckle type. So this recognizes the type of object. We've got pipes, structures, and meshes. Meshes are the surfaces. And obviously pipes and structures are associated with the, uh, the gravity networks. So we're, we're going to add another table that includes all the additional information. We're going to leave off data, uh, the data network we want to show how we can continue to make those different isolation options. Let's 
create a new table. And we're going to add the data network to this one. So everything's being listed out here. And we're adding the information to the visualization, the columns. And as you can see, now that everything's connected, everything's available, as we start isolating some of this information, we could see things isolate and we could better analyze um, what's going on. So this is essentially another way to create that model federation environment, but into something that's a little easier to, to understand for someone who's not familiar with those design authoring tools. Great option for sending to clients, project managers, even engineers who just want to analyze the data and see everything kind of connected. So if we take this uh, a step further, I've kind of scaled this up. I've added some more visualizations, made it a little prettier, essentially, but still using that same data set. And you can see that we, we can start isolating different types of information as well. Again, it's just the pipe structures and meshes right now, but as we select and deselect some of these uh, objects, the object types, which are those speckle objects, we can see all the information being filtered out. So great way to, to quickly analyze uh, some of the data. So that's great. Now, what can we do from here? How can we scale that up even more? So here, is another Power BI dashboard that I've been able to incorporate not only the speckled data, but also the data being extracted and exported from Project Explorer. So this is scaling it up even more and being able to provide more information to the right people. So if you're a contractor and maybe you wanna uh, start generating some quick cost estimations, um, some, some very rough cost estimations, I guess, uh, some quantification reports and whatnot, you could start visually in, in analyzing, visualizing and analyzing some of that data and, and the objects within here as well. And again, I didn't add the, uh, the speckle viewer to this one specifically, but you can certainly add that to all of these different tabs and, and these reports and share that out so you can see all that information. In this one, we're, we're looking at the surfaces. We have both composite surfaces, so cut fills, and, uh, and some of the individual surfaces as well. So we can start analyzing some of that, figure out how much dirt needs to be moved or added, brought to, brought to the site, whatever it may be. And then if we jump over to the gravity networks and the pressure networks, I've added some, some more levels of complexity. So we have some basic formulaic equations applied to the rough cost estimation tools section in the lower right. So we could start analyzing all this information. We could see how much covers associated with the individual pipes. We could see how deep the structures are. If we isolate just one pipe network, we could see if we change this, this value for the price per linear foot, we could see all these other uh, values update automatically as well. So really cool on the contractor side, they'll be able to use this tool um, in collaboration with Speckle to be able to analyze their, their data, the, the model geometry, the designs before they go in and bid on a project. So some really cool things going on with this and just to, really wanted to highlight a couple real quick ways on how we can create that, feder that model federation in an environment that's easily digestible to additional project stakeholders. So taking it to new heights and collaboration at scale. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, it can be reached at stevewalls at hotmail.com or on LinkedIn. Uh, love to get your thoughts. Thanks.